Tonight's episode of the Sunday Night Talk is up and ready. Week four in the NFL is in the books. Me and Omar Carmona have our traditional Sunday night talk about it. It's Sunday night. You got school the next day. You got work the next day. You got to figure stuff out. You got to be in the right place mentally. So you got to have a Sunday night talk about it. We always do. Kind of a crestfallen week. Both our teams lost. Some things we learned in the NFL. Maybe we already knew them, but I think they showed themselves to be true this week. But as a special edition this week, we incorporated a debate edition into our Sunday night talk. Hey, the country totally forgot how to debate. The rules, the discourse, the just general courtesy. So we thought we would take a shot at it. Each one of us were given two minutes to make their case for their game of the week. And then the other one rebutted their argument. Hey, real adult stuff. Hey, if you're new to my channel, check out my other show, Running It Back, with me, Patrick Ramirez, where I interview a friend or an acquaintance or another professional in some regard, and we run it back on something. This week, coming out on Thursday, me and my friend, stand-up comedian Travis Tate, we run it back on the movie The Wizard. Yeah, remember that movie? Fred Savage. Yeah, you do. Great times. It'll come out on Thursday. I know you're going to love it. But right now, the Sunday Night Talk with me and Omar Carmona. Hit the music. Okay, it's another Sunday night. Week four in the books. Joining me as always, my general counsel, Omar Carmona. We just wrapped up Sunday night, Eagles versus 49ers. You look a little bummed out. This was a a telling week four. I'm a little bummed out. My team is not good. It was a telling week. It was a surprising week. It's a week that's still sort of in flux, too, with with Monday night still still, uh, to be sort of TBD. Two games tomorrow. Yeah, so we're, we're this this is an odd week, but we just wrapped up Sunday night Eagles versus your 49ers. They lost. Is this a turning point for the Eagles? You know what? It, it may be, but I don't think there's any team right now in the NFC East that can say there's a turning point here. I mean, I think it's all trash, which makes me even more concerned for the 49ers because, I mean, if they're losing to the Eagles, then they're just as bad. Because now when you think about it, they're the defending NFC champions, and their only two wins, I mean, their two wins so far have been against the Jets and Giants, and, and, and those teams are horrible. So that tells me <laughs> that maybe, maybe this 49ers team really isn't that good either. But then again, wow. I mean, let me, let me just, you know, to defend them, they're, they're missing their top three defensive backs, uh, two pass rushers, one, you know, it, it, Nick Bosa being one of the best pass rushers in the game. Uh, they're missing Garoppolo, missing uh, Mostert. Uh, they're missing some uh, linebackers. I mean, they're hurting. Uh, so that's not lost on me, but definitely, you know, this is not where we want to be at this point in the season, two and two. How about they used uh, two quarterbacks in this game too? Yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, Mullins, who has been decent for the 49ers in previous weeks in, in relief of Garoppolo, uh, but just really ineffective tonight. Uh, Bethard's come in and, and, you know, he, he, he orchestrated an, o- an opening touchdown drive. Uh, but other than that, you know, obviously the 49ers need to have Garoppolo out there. So you think this is a more of the 49ers are bad, not the Eagles are good loss? The 49ers are very hurt. So I'm not going to say they're bad, but with what they can put out there right now, it's not good. Yeah, I dubbed them the San Francisco we need a medic 49ers last week. And maybe this was, this was the result of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, how about Al Michaels is back? I'm telling you, I just think maybe, you know, he's, he's trying to slow things down and, you know, he's, he's earned it, you know? Um, and, and it was nice to hear uh, Tariko last week, but, you know, it's also, but, you know, n- no one's going to beat Collinsworth and Al Michaels. They're great together. What is it about those two? I'm with you. They start talking and they say some of the most silliest old man dad jokes. 
and I'm still enjoying it a hundred percent. What is it about those two? Like I, I know it's, it's a, uh, I know I'm taken care of. Whereas I watched some other games today with other announcers. I could have fallen asleep. <laughs> well, they play off each other real well. And you know, that's a result of they've done this for the last 15 years together. So it, it, or, you know, it, it's definitely a good team. Do you think they ever have a, an, an argument or a disagreement or a fight behind scenes that we never see? What do you think the you know, fight is about? You know, the, the, you know, there's been stories that I've heard, you know, about Chris Berman being a little difficult to work with. Uh, you know, I think we've seen YouTubes of him blowing up. I don't see these guys blowing up like other people do. I, I really think they're genuinely nice guys. At least I hope they are. They seem like genuinely pleasant people to me too. You're right. I, I don't see them being difficult to work with as opposed to the Schwam. Teach. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what it is. They say the most asinine stuff, and I'm still enjoying it 100%. It was good. And it was a good week of football this week. It wasn't bad. It was, I mean, obviously, you know, we were a little shell-shocked getting the uh, two games, one, one being postponed, period, but, and one being just moved to the next, uh, you know, to tomorrow. But, but definitely, you know, NFL put together – they put together a great program, a, a great product, and uh, still a good week of football. Yeah, what did you think of – did you catch this segment uh, Sunday night? They went no crowd noise being pumped in for, for a break or for a drive, and you got to hear them kind of quiet on the field. I want that. I want to keep that. I don't want crowd noise pumped in. I'm over the crowd noise pumped I'm, in. I'm over, the, I'm over the crowd noise. I want to hear it fun. quiet. Yeah. No. So, yeah, kudos to NBC for, for giving us a little bit of designated crowd noise uh, muted so we could just hear what's going on there. Definitely. Definitely. Sunday night, kind of a bummer of a game. Not too much going on there. Did it surprise you in any way? Did you think they were going to win? At well, some you point? Know, well, you know, they're teasing me right now. They got the ball with a minute 40 left from what I'm watching right now. And they're driving their way back uh, on the yeah, opposite side. We're recording the- this as the game hasn't ended yet. So but, you know, they're, it, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're, here they are teasing me. Let, you know, let's just move on with the show. I don't want to. I don't want to pay any more attention to what's going on in front of me right now. Okay, fine. I don't want to upset you. I just. I'm if upset. Anything, I'm upset. I'm upset. <laughs> if anything happens, you might. We might have to have a Sunday night talk. Just talking you off the ledge. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. We'll move on in a truly crazy week. We did the usuals. You took on a game. I took on a game. And this week, though, in the format of a presidential debate, which is a complete oh, and show this week. Wasn't that something else? That was, that was uh, if anything, an asinine conversation between just two regular guys. Forget, <laughs> really forget people of power. <laughs> like, my God. You know, I don't think it's a good thing when you watch something like that and they're trying to advertise themselves for the biggest I guess the most important position in the world, arguably, and you step away from that thinking, wow, I don't like either of these two. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think anybody can honestly say they learned anything from that. I don't, I don't, I think down in your deepest of hearts, you did not come away from that saying like that went off. Well, it reminded me of two kids arguing and you say to the one kid, all right, He's going to speak now. You be quiet. And the other kid goes, he stole my M&Ms. The other kid goes, liar. Yeah. <laughs> I just told you. How are we going to yeah. have any, any discourse? You know, well, it's- well, let's, show, <laughs> let's show the fans that we can do it a little better uh, for our presidential debate over here. But definitely, that, that's, the, that's the theme we should keep. That, that, that debate, the art of debate is not lost, okay? <laughs> the art of debate, the ar- you truly can appreciate the art of discourse and conversation and debate having watched that. I also like what kind of state of the country are you in where you ask the president, Hey, just to clear things up, are you racist? <laughs> 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 just, just for the people, by the way, by the way, are you, are you racist? I, I got to know. I, I need your answer on this. You know, I, I really need your answer on this. <laughs> <laughs> and feel free to give me a very vague answer. So we don't really solve anything. <laughs> yes. Well, our debate, this week is going to be you are going to defend or you are going to make a case for your game that you watched. I am going to rebut your game and then vice versa. So to start off the Sunday night talk debate edition, debate Omar edition. Carmona, your game was 
The I Cleveland had the Browns at the Dallas Cowboys. You have two minutes, sir. Okay. This actually was a sleeper of a game for three quarters. The Browns kicked the Cowboys' butts up and down the field for three quarters. The Cowboys would not let go, scoring 24 straight points in the fourth quarter to get back in the game. And then, of course, the, at the very end, a 50-yard uh, uh, pass to a little hitch and go to uh, – I'm sorry, just a little, a little out to uh, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. He takes it 50 yards, uh, scores three touchdowns this game. Final score, 49-38, Browns over Cowboys. Um, so the question becomes, are Browns really good at three and one? Or are the Cowboys really bad at one and three? Keeping in mind that that one game that they won, they probably should have lost with that boneheaded uh, Atlanta Falcons uh, onside kick coverage. Uh, but nonetheless, I actually think the Browns, aren't that bad. Okay. But the Cowboys are terrible. Okay. They are a terrible football team. The Cleveland Browns put up 49 points on the road against who should be the NFC East champions. Okay. So I just think these guys can't tackle. They can't stop the run. I mean, these guys ran all over them. Kareem Hunt, Kareem Hunt had a field day. So I just think the Dallas Cowboys are that bad. Okay. My, How about you? My rebuttal. Two minutes, rebuttal. I have to rebut your game. My rebuttal, let me get this straight. You're saying the Cleveland Browns beating – the Dallas Cowboys who should be winless on the season at this point was a telling game. Dallas has zero defense. Dallas is implementing the flag football form of defense. Well, the Browns are putting 40 something points on them. Dallas kind of mounts a little comeback and we're impressed by the, the win of the Cleveland Browns. I don't know where this argument's coming from because Dallas is, is bad. You said it yourself. Dallas is bad. You like the Browns because, because they beat up on a little kid? I don't see it. And we didn't even get Jerry Jones, Cam. I can't believe you're, selling, you're, you're buying Brown stock based off of this game. You, you know, but, but that, that it's, it's, not, it's not a bad win. And now, you know, now they're 3-1, and one and they're quiet 3-1. and one. It's a very quiet Cleveland Browns 3-1 and one team. But uh, I, I will say, uh, by far, uh, the Dallas Cowboys are, are, are very disappointing. By the way, that's a final out of San Francisco, 25-20, incomplete pass, fourth and 10. Uh, Beathard fired it into the end zone, incomplete. The San Francisco 49ers go to 2-2 two and two on the year. Philadelphia two. Eagles, 1-2-1. One, and one. Not good. It was, a, it was a quiet Sunday night game. There wasn't, there wasn't a lot to get jazzed up about, I agree. In that Dallas game, were you impressed by the offense of the Browns or was the defense poor on the Dallas Cowboys part? You know, you know, Odell Beckham had a great game. Kareem Hunt had a great game. And Baker Mayfield didn't make many huge mistakes. And he, I mean, he seemed fine. But I'm just, I just saw missed tackle after missed tackle, blown coverages. You know, I mean, that, that 50-yard that last touchdown play by uh, Odell Beckham Jr. just – it was just real pathetic watching the Dallas Cowboys trying to tackle this guy. You know what is that I liked about the game? We have seen a bunch of Baker Mayfield commercials the last few weeks. He's in the Hulu one. He's in the Allstate one. And the progressive, like, it's progressive. Progressive. He's in the progressive one. And I'm thinking, man, if you're going to go, you're going to have a losing season. If you're going to be 0 and 6, 0 and 7, and you're in these commercials, that's a bad move because you record all those commercials in the pre in the off season. And then right. you have to stare at your ugly mug for six, seven, eight weeks, knowing that you're terrible. So a big, big win for Mayfield's commercials. Now, now we can right. sort of take them seriously in the Hulu commercials. Right. I like his, what, uh, what, the Hulu what, what, ones are, are ridiculous. I don't, I don't uh, get those at all. The progressive stupid. ones are kind of funny. What game did you get this week? Okay. For my opening statement, I watched the, um, hold on. I forgot. I've watched the LA chargers at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
or as I now call them, the Tampa Brady Buccaneers. This was Brady's best game. I'm going to read you his stats, 30 of 46, 369 yards, five TDs, one interception that, I mean, it, it was, that was like a first-term interception. He was still fiddling out the defense. No big deal. He threw the ball deep. Everybody gives him a hard time. He can't throw deep. He threw deep multiple times. He overthrew Gronk at one point. <laughs> this was, don't interrupt. This was my Tom Brady is in control game. This is Tom Brady taking control of his team. He's got, uh, he's got a good cohesion with the, with the receivers. He's feeling better and better. He knows the offense. This is the one, if Tom Brady is delivering the State of the Union address, this is the man that you want to go four years with. So Tom Brady, coming out party, Tampa Bay, big win for the Buccaneers. Tom Brady's your president. Tom Brady's my president after this game. Okay. You're let me tell you about, you let me tell you about, Brady. let me tell you, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, let me tell you about this up and coming, up and coming star who, who's going to be um, uh, shaking things up in our Congress pretty soon. And that's Justin Herbert. Okay. This guy is impressive. 20 of 25, 290 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. You know, he just plays solid ball. And, and, you know, given the fact that he was just thrown in because of an injury uh, to T uh, Tyrod Taylor, uh, he, he's playing great. And I think he's got the early edge for offensive rookie of the year already. Uh, and, and I think that I think the, 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 the Los Angeles Chargers are very fortunate to go from a franchise quarterback in, in, in Phillip Rivers. And now, you know, he leaves to Indianapolis. And now it looks like they found the, his heir apparent, you know, because some franchises can go year after year after year with replacement and draft pick and free agent and backup now becoming starter. It looks like uh, they found their next, uh, the, uh, their new star. So, um, you know, I, I will say it was, it was a remarkable performance from Tom Brady, but definitely uh, you watch this uh, Justin Herbert. He's going to, he's going to be something. Let me, I will rebut the rebut. Justin Herbert played well. He faltered in the end though. So it was, the moment was maybe a little too big for him. He's like the AOC of the AFC West. Just a little bit too big of a moment for him. A little more experience needed. It'll come. Maybe it'll come. Fine. So um, I, he, he faltered at the end. A couple, uh, I, think he tur I think he turned it over at the end. Um, and also, you are neglecting the Chargers curse. The Chargers are cursed, my friend. They will find ways to lose. So Herbert, no matter where he goes into, he may, he may just inherit the, the Chargers curse of, hey, remember that game where you guys almost won? Oh, right, right. You guys lost. Hey, remember, that was a great game you guys all – oh, that's right. You guys missed a booboo. Oh, that's right. So that's my rebut to the rebut. Also, hey, how about this? It took a while for that game to get started because Brady was down early in that game by a couple touchdowns and Florida's the first state to be open. So they had some fans there and I'm thinking like, what a pain in the ass. You're the first state to be open. You get out and then you're like, ah, oh, we gotta go back inside. <laughs> yeah. 17 points. But Brady pulled it out. The bucks pulled it off. Good for them. What else for did sure. I notice in that game? Uh, Brady's pick six. I don't know if this is true or not. Brady throws the pick six. The charger guy runs in the end zone. I think he gives the crowd the bird. They showed it real quick, and then they didn't show it. I think he gave them the bird, the old-fashioned bird. I miss giving the bird. Wow. Well, it hasn't been done since the, the Brian Cox days, uh, the old uh, uh, linebacker out of Miami. But it, it's right. a nice touch. It's a nice touch. You know, we're all, we've all been cramped up in our homes. Been, you know, some of us have been bubbled, and these athletes have been away from their family. So I, I admire the bird. I, I, he gave I, the I, bird. I wish I, wish I had DVR so I could go back and, and confirm this. I, maybe we'll see a fine to confirm that he gave the bird, but I think he gave the bird on the, on the pick six. Also, here's my next favorite part, and I think we're going to see this in every Tom Brady game now. The game ends, and they're shaking hands. Tom Brady basically has a receiving line of people going up to him to want to shake his hands and hug him. He's, it's like he gets married every Sunday, and everybody has to go dab him up. And it seems like given the pandemic, we shouldn't be shaking the oldest man's, 
you know, he, he's the oldest <laughs> guy out there. We shouldn't be near the, uh, the elder statesman, if you will. <laughs> Tom, I was joking in the first quarter when Tom Brady wasn't playing good yet. I was like, he needs to dye his hair black again. His brown, <laughs> his brown hair is not his look. He's not an autumn. Definitely not an autumn. Back. That's good. Uh, anyway, well, you know, we should be giving out our, 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 our awards out, you know, our, our congressional awards. You know, we got some, we got some, uh, uh, some people that are well, uh, well deserving of, of some awards this week. Who do you got first? Awards. Here we go. My awards. I have the debate edition. Debate edition. Of the Sunday night awards. Debate edition. First award, I got four of them. First award, this is the No Interrupting Award. Okay. And that goes to the Seattle Seahawks. There is no interrupting the Seattle Seahawks train. They're winning all the time. They can do anything they want. They won across the country today. They were away, they just, and they won easily. Okay. So that's the No Interruption Award. My No Interruption Award goes to Josh Allen again. He is just also uh, – you know, he's right on Russell Wilson's tails for that MVP award. He's just firing the ball, taking huge chances. And, 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 and you know, he really had the, the Raiders looking foolish, your Raiders looking foolish today. Uh, so definitely no interrupting him. And on a side note, honorable mention, nobody interrupt Al Michaels while he talks. It's just great to have him back. Love Al Michaels. No interruption. Those are good. Okay. I have the... The moderator loses control award, and that goes to the fight in the New York Giants L.A. Rams game. I don't know if what? you saw that fight. That was there. a great fight. It was the it was the most exciting thing to watch in that game because that was a pretty bad game to watch. That was a snoozer. That game was a snoozer. It makes me worry that the Rams play to the skill level of their opponent, no matter what the opponent. So so no interruption. Uh, I want to give the award to the Dallas Cowboys because they did not interrupt that uh, that Cleveland Browns running attack all afternoon long, just running up and down. Oh. They did not interrupt them at all. Uh, the Cleveland Browns just had a field day with them r- running the ball. So they, they are definitely my no interruption award. Wow. <laughs> no interruption. Do you have a moderator loses control award? Oh, well, that's why I went back to it. I'm sorry. My, my, my bad. My bad. I, I, I'm getting my notes mixed up here. The moderator loses control. Um, how, how can, let me see. How can I bash the Dallas Cowboys? Go with the Dallas Cowboys. Go with the Dallas Cowboys. This is a very, uh, uh, this is a very bipartisan uh, Sunday it, night talk. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, their coach, had, had, their, Mike McCarthy's got no control of that team right now. Uh, he, he's lost control, and so it's only his fourth game coaching that franchise. So he's he's lost all control. Hey, what do you think Jason Garrett's record would be if he was still coach of the Dallas Cowboys? You know, that's a good question, and I think it would be one and three. So <laughs> we're moving on. <laughs> no, no change, no change, Cowboys. I got uh, award number three. Let's go. This one's called. You are no Jack Kennedy award. And that goes to, sadly, my Las Vegas Raiders. We showed up, we had a premier game, and we didn't perform. Ugh, that was, it was pretty bad. It was, it pretty was, sad to watch. It was a good game. And just like the, the game week before where they played the Patriots, they just really had a really poor fourth quarter. Yeah. They were, they were playing, they were competing. They never got the lead, but they were competing. And the fourth quarter came around, there was a fumble, there was a turnover, and we just didn't finish the game. Hey, what do, you, what do you think, this is in my questions, what do you think John Gruden and Derek Carr's relationship is right now? It can't be too bad. I mean, looking at his numbers, 32 of 44, 311 yards, two touchdowns, it's not, that's a, that's a pretty good, you know, a pretty good day. And you know, I just think that the, the Raiders' uh, defense just wasn't up to the task of trying to stop uh, uh, Josh Allen and the, and the Bills and the Bills uh, attack. So I think looking looking at it right now, I'd be more concerned uh, uh, with that defense. I think if they were to get some, you know, uh, make some bigger stops, you know, um, you know, lock some of these teams down, 
the Raiders really have a shot to, um, you know, making the playoffs and who knows, uh, let's see how far they go. But I, I definitely think it's more of a defensive problem with the Raiders and it is an offensive problem. So I don't think that Gruden and, and, and Carr um, have a bad relationship at this they're, point. They're cool with each other. Okay. They're cool. Definitely. We had no pass rush today. There was, there was no pass rush. Josh Allen was dancing around finding guys easily. So I'm going to chalk it up. It might take a whole 24 hours, but it, it's going to – I can say, like, okay, we lost to a good team. We played three good quarters. We're still on the right track. I, I can talk myself into that. Right. In my, but for the week the – So you my, my, my – you're no Jack Kennedy award. Uh, that's going to go to – I'm sorry. I hate to say this. I, I really hate to say this because I like the guy. But it's Nick Foles. You know, the, 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 big, the, the big talk was, you know, Chicago, one of the uglier looking 3-0 teams in recent memory. Uh, they, give the ball, they give the ball to Nick Foles to come in, and now he's going to be the savior. And you know what? It, it's still just an underperforming Chicago Bears team. So even if you, you know, yes, he won the MVP award, uh, uh, won a Super Bowl not too long ago. Uh, but you know what? Uh, it, it, it's just a bad performance all, all around. And I, I think that's a team that's going to be – in desperate need of looking for a franchise quarterbacks. Again? Seems like again. Been, like we've been having this conversation with the Bears forever. Nick Foles, maybe, it might take a whole nother year, but Nick Foles may get the Jeff Hostetler Award in another year. Maybe. Jeff, Jeff Hostetler won the Super Bowl and then became a journeyman quarterback. Or could you, or could you rename that, or Jeff Hostetler's uh, performance, could you rename that? The Nick Foles Award, giving oh, a retroactive award. A retroactive award. But mm -hmm. but definitely um, you know, I, and I like Nick Foles, but it, it, that's a team going nowhere. They're three and one, and I just don't see how you're already three. out on the Bears. You're already out. I'm out I'm I'm, I'm out on Before the Bears. You're out. They're, they're gonna be three they're gonna lose three straight. You I, we're gonna be talking about this in a few weeks and they're gonna be three and four. Okay. You're out on the Bears. Wow, this has been a good debate so far. I got one more award. This is the Share the Floor Award. This one goes to the NBA Finals having their game three at the same time as a Sunday night NFL game. I don't know who thought this idea was a good idea. We've already proven that we can manipulate the games however we want NBA. Why have it Sunday night opposite the Sunday night game? Maybe, maybe they saw San Francisco Eagles and they're like, fuck it, let's go for it. But I watched, I think I watched 10 minutes of it, the very end of it, and that was about it, just out of curiosity. Well, well, on, on that note, to piggyback off, off your award, you may not even know this, but the WNBA is in their WNBA finals right now. Baseball's in the playoffs. So it just kind of seems when, when the NFL's eating, no one else really gets to eat, even if it's LeBron James with the Lakers, you know? So... Yeah, I, that, I, I agree with you on that, on, on that award, Senator, for sure. Yeah, I didn't, know, I, didn't know ba I didn't know the baseball schedule. I didn't know WNBA. Arguably, I, I don't know WNBA anyway. I don't follow it. But this was, yeah, I, I don't know why you schedule stuff on Sundays when we got other, yeah. when we got a full slate of NFL games going. You just can't really, if it, you know, yeah, I'm looking right here, WNBA Game two of the WNBA Finals, the Storm over the Aces, uh, uh, 104-91. I didn't even know the Aces. I don't even know where they're from, uh, but, but they're in the WNBA Finals. But nonetheless, mm, I guess. just don't under – what's that? Let's guess. Where do you think the Aces are from based off that nickname? Vegas? Vegas? Would it be Vegas? Aces, right? Reno? <laughs> Are Reno? Jersey, Atlantic City? The Las Vegas Aces, yeah, Aces. I, I just, yeah, I figured it was, it's it's the Las Vegas Aces. I didn't know that, um, but you know, I just don't get other leagues, other you know, like other other sports leagues that try to go head to head with the NFL ever, okay? Because we're gonna watch, because we're suckers, okay? Because we we're definitely suckers, yeah. We, we watch. Anytime the NFL has something, we're going to watch. But, you know, I, I've never understood why would you schedule something on a Sunday? I mean, I'm okay with you trying to go at them Monday night, 
Uh, the Monday night game, if you want to go after them, that's fine. If you want to try to take the Thursday night game away from them and try to, you know, because usually those games aren't really good anyways. But but to schedule they should have went on Thursday. Yeah, if they want to pick a night, go Thursday. That's I, I think that's your only shot to go up against an NFL game. And you're right, though. We'll watch anything. You're talking to a guy who watched season one and season two of Jersey Shore just because it was on and I was curious. We will watch it. Just put it on, just opposite NFL, uh, not on day on, on NFL. We'll totally watch it. Absolutely. And the Absolutely. final, I don't know what the NBA finals did that. I was talking with someone on my other show. Is this, say the Lakers win, is this LA's final or is this LeBron's final? And now I'm convinced it's, L, it's LeBron's final. It's LeBron's final. I don't think we're even watching it, to be honest. Uh, the series could turn and maybe we will, but now I think right. it's LeBron's final. <laughs> all right you want to do some other games sure all right i got giants versus rams in the empty sofi stadium great fight in the middle of it the giants were feisty for a little while but ultimately the rams kind of like whatever team they play oh you stink well we'll stink just a little less uh, you know i will say this I want, to, I want to read a little more into it but apparently this has something to do with jalen ramsey uh, uh, dating Golden Tate's, and I guess the and I guess Jalen Ramsey's the father uh, to um, uh, two of Tate's nieces or nephews. But I, I believe that Jalen Ramsey was in a relationship with Golden Tate's sister at one point. So apparently, Whoa. there's there's something we there's something we gotta we gotta look into. Whoa! Inside, and this caused the fight, or is this something that is just no knowledge? I, I, you know, before I start spreading rumors, I, I better look into it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say just keep it going. <laughs> like six people listen to this. You're fine. All right. I got my game, Buffalo versus the Las Vegas Raiders, which I've called them Los Angeles Raiders 10 times by mistake now because they're, they're Las Vegas. First thing I noticed, the announcer, the CBS announcer for this game his name, Spiro Beatties. That was <laughs> his name. That's, a, that's, you, that's an announcer name. That is the best name since Ian Eagle. Nice. Who, uh, the, that dude, I was, swear to God, that dude went by one name for like five years until they showed his name up on the screen. I was like, oh, it's Ian Eagle. And he pronounces it Ian Eagle. Oh, I get it. So Spiro Beatties, the new announcer for CBS Late Game. Uh, frustrating fourth quarter, and I'm still thinking, we've been trying to figure out Derek Carr for five years now. I still don't think we know what Derek Carr is. He's become our Tony Romo. Never goes to the playoffs, has some little spurts of uh, greatness here and there in the regular season. And in this stat, I pray to God I read it wrong. He has 151 touchdown passes in his career, making him the highest um, touchdown passes by a Raider in history above Ken Stabler. I pray I read that stat wrong. How can this be? Right. Lastly, John Gruden really needs to untuck his shirt on the sideline. He's got this huge <laughs> uh, gut, and he, he tucks his he shirt. Is. I get him like an untucked shirt or something. Patrick, I noticed that today. He's got for the, the man first boots. Time. He's got the big he, gut. Like, because all I could think about was the way he looked when he first got to Oakland back, you know, in the late nineties. And it's like, Whoa, man, mm -hmm. that, that he put on some pounds. He's, he's bigger for sure. Someone needs to put a side by side 2005 or what? No, no. 2002 John Gruden versus 2020 John Gruden. It's upsetting. He's got the big old belly, a better shirt. And I probably wouldn't even have noticed this. Right. Can I give you my, I made, uh, I made my family, my Raiders family. Let me give you my Raiders family. I got Derek Carr. He's my older brother. Okay. John Gruden. He's my angry principal at school. Uh, Hunter Renfro, goofy friend. Jason Witten, cool English teacher. <laughs> That's pretty Darren good. Waller. He's the strange guy that I'm forced to work with at my, part-time job and Josh Jacobs friend who beats me up at least once a year. That's my Las Vegas Raiders family. 
Well, I'm not going to take too much longer on that, but I'll give you my 49er family. I, I just need a Joe and Jennifer Montana who'd protect my kid from an intruder, uh, you know, on a, on a kidnapping attempt. So, you know, God bless them. They, they stopped her, you know, in her tracks. They apparently this intruder actually made it and grabbed the grandchild who was sleeping in a crib or something like that. So that's what I read. Uh, yeah, there was a, a kidnap. Uh, someone broke into Joe Montana's house. And was trying to abduct his grandkid? Yeah. And so Joe Montana wanna, stopped him? Right. And if you want to put the political spin on it, that, that would be my, my uh, Secretary of Defense right there. I read that Joe Montana saw the abductor lifting up the kid and looked around and said, hey, check it out. There's John Candy over there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that... that that, that would have made sense. Always cool. He's always cool. He's, he's been known to do that. All right. You want to hear my questions for week four? My week Let's four questions? It. All right. Questions for week four. We've had the craziest year, especially topping off with this week. The president gets COVID. NFL has no fans. Nothing should surprise us anymore at this point. What's the next crazy thing that's going to happen? I wonder. To me... When this happens, I'm not even going to be surprised. It's going to be The Rock invents the vaccine for COVID. Oh, that's a, that's a real good one. Crazy, but we're not, I'm not even surprised anymore. Nothing can surprise me anymore this week. And he puts out the forest fires too, maybe, for good measure. I say, I say the next crazy thing that we'll see, because everything's just so crazy, I think we'll see the Atlanta Falcons hold on to a fourth quarter lead at some point in time. Oh, crazy. <laughs> that would surprise me. Here's my next question, week four question. Are you surprised slash concerned that we haven't had a catch controversy yet in the NFL? You know, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't, I think, here's, here's my thought on that. I, I think that it's easier now for, for referees to make the right call and not have to worry about crowd pressure and, and the hecklers and you know people throwing batteries on the field because you know there's no crowd so i think that i think that takes a lot of pressure off of them and and i think that that clears their mind and then they're calling better games oh, okay i didn't week one we were kind of down on the refs but now you're seeing saying that no crowd may actually have heightened their concentration and ability right. to call the game i, I had so. this idea years ago and i've heard other people have the idea in some different version here's my idea when it comes to replays i call it the replay helen keller you know how when you have a replay the ref goes under the hood and they have to look at the play and if there's enough evidence to overturn it they overturn it but if there's not they have to maintain it the replay helen keller sits in a soundproof box and when there's a play to be reviewed they bring him out, and he has to make the call no matter what. They have no idea what the score is. They have no idea the situation in the game, and they're forced to make a call. That's the replay, Helen Keller. That would be fascinating. Pure that, that's, objectivity from replay, Helen that's Keller. Genius. That's genius. I'm willing to rename it the replay uh, abductee, too. We, keep, we abduct someone somewhere in around August, and we put them in a windowless cell, and we only take them out to review plays. I like that. We, we really got to throw that around. <laughs> okay, uh, next question. CBS game was Raiders-Buffalo. I'm watching the CBS game. CBS oh, I know where running, you're going with this. Where, CBS is running ads. You already know where I'm going with this. CBS is running ads for the Sunday night movie, Old School. They're like, the Sunday night movie, old school, 8 p.m. Eastern. Does CBS know we have Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, DVDs, YouTube? You know, why, is, why are they ever doing old school? CBS is truly for people 70 years and older, isn't it? Because we're so used to, like, on all the channels, hearing, okay, next, we have The Voice. We have, you know, uh, 60 Minutes. We have, you know, NCI and, you know, NC, NCI, whatever. Um, you know, we're used to all these shows and all the, it was, it was shocking to see a, a major network push a, a, a movie, a primetime movie. I, I think the last primetime movie I saw was probably Backdraft in 94 on NBC, you know, <laughs> and another thing, 
Who wants to watch an edited version of old school? That's what you I was know? gonna say. What can they they're gonna show 70% of this movie? They can't show <laughs> old school and with any appreciation. This these state you're like you're not even 10 years behind CBS, you're 15, 20 years behind. When back in the day would be like, oh, after the game, the fugitive. And we would be like, oh right. shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love the fugitive. And what was so funny about those movies is that like because of the commercials, like you'd literally have to like space out three hours of your time to watch like a 90 minute movie <laughs> because yeah. of all the commercials. Remember how you would have to negotiate with your parents somewhere around halftime of the game. You're like, mom, can I stay up to watch this movie? I promise I'll, I'll be up in the morning. And you would have to go this deep negotiation with your parents right. just to stay up and watch it. Do you remember when they showed Schindler's List on NBC or oh NBC yeah, or something once? And that was a, that was a big deal. And then we talked about that. Well, by the way, we already saw the movie. We already saw it. It already won the Oscar. And then they showed it on TV and we're like, oh, let's watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. All right. Last question. Who won the week? Who won the week? And, and by, 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 by who won the week? The best performance right now? Um, best, best. It's, I, it's broad. It's broad. It can be who won the week? The fans. It can be who won the week. Okay. Um, the players. Who won the I am week? gonna go. The I am NBA. gonna go. I am gonna go with a franchise that they're just you know as much as I don't like them, as much as they're the the uh, arch nemesis of my favorite team, the 49ers, I, I just think that that the Seattle Seahawks are just rolling away with with you know with the NFC right now. I think that they are a step a you know a notch above. Uh, the rest of the teams in their division. And I think they're a notch above the Green Bay Packers who play tomorrow against the hapless Falcons. But I, I, I really like what Russell Wilson's doing. And, and I definitely think that he's winning the week. Uh, you know, this, this Miami team, although they're one and three, they're not bad. They're, they're an up and coming team and they're playing hard. Uh, so I definitely think that Russell Wilson and the, and the Seahawks definitely won the week. Okay. I say Odell Beckham Jr. won the week showcasing wow. balance. He threw a pass. He caught a pass. He's running all over the place. Odell Beckham won the week. He's my, my Matt Damon in Goodwill Hunting. Just on fire. On fire for the whole 90 minutes. I like so that. He, he won the week. Let's, uh, let's predict Monday night. Early game. I'm thinking of a new segment for our show in the next weeks, and it's going to be called COVID Corner. And we just talk about who's out, <laughs> who's quarantining, who's, uh, who messed up your fantasy because of COVID corner. But we got uh, New England at KC. I think they're going to play early, right? The Chiefs are going to run away with this one. Uh, with, with Cam Newton out because of COVID, I, I, don't, I don't like the Patriots. I don't think they're going to move the ball at all. You know, that, that, that can, everyone talks about Pat Mahomes' offense and, 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 and all the targets he has, all the weapons he has. But that Kansas City defense is really stout. And so I think without Cam Newton, um, it, the only way you're going to beat the Chiefs, in my opinion, is a shootout. And if, if, if Ryan Hoyer is your guy going in there, um, it, it, it ain't a good thing. So I, I think the Ryan Chiefs Hoyer. are going to run away with it. Ryan Hoyer, this is – you're right. There's no way that New England can, can go against them, right? This is – I almost say they're going to take the week off. They're just like take their blowout loss – and regroup what's the word of, when does cam Newton get to come back does he have to quarantine for seven days so we might see i don't him know i mean does this i mean obviously yeah i think we're now, now does this go. put does this put next week at jeopardy i don't know so we'll see how we'll see how it plays out in the next few days yeah we, we're really figuring this out on the fly it's not like any of this protocol has been precedented or anything like that we're just sort of figuring it out um we both got the cheats I go Chiefs also easily by more than a touchdown. Uh, what's the second game? Oh, it's Atlanta at Green Bay or the other way around? Yeah. Uh, Atlanta at Green Bay. Again, I, I think we're in for a snoozer tomorrow as far as games go. We might I, be. I, I, this might have been the night to have the finals in the WNBA. Yeah. I, 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 I like the Packers on, the, uh, on this one. Uh, Falcons, another team, just defense. I mean, they, they just punch lists. They, they're gutless. Uh, they're not. They're not going to keep up with the Packers. Uh, Aaron Rodgers should decimate um, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. And as much as I like Matt Ryan, Calvin Ridley, um, Todd Gurley, uh, the Falcons just don't have the uh, the firepower to stick with the Packers for four quarters. 
Let's say Packers win, Kansas City wins. That means they're both 4-0, Seattle's 4-0. I think those are only three 4-0 teams. What, where do you got top three 4-0 teams? Seattle, KC, Green Bay, number one. It, it, ew. In that, in that, oh, oh, you discounted the Bills. Bills are also undefeated. Sorry, Bills as well. Okay, four four no teams. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll rank them. I'll rank them. I'll start at number four. I'll take the Packers at number four. Okay. Close, I'll take the Bills at number three, but I'm saying close to the Seahawks. I don't think they're far from the Seahawks, okay? Uh, and that, that they're really two, two A and two B in my opinion. And then, uh, I mean, just the head of the class, that's the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. I agree. I go KC, Seattle, but I'm going to flip Packers number three, Bills number four. I, I, think, I think the Bills are, are young. Uh, they look good today, though. Stephon Diggs is catching everything. Everything. So they, they just might be lightning in a bottle team this year, and I could see the Packers hitting the skid somewhere somewhere in the season. So I'm, I'm kind of the belief this is going to be a tale of two seasons this year. The second half of the season, we'll see some teams catch fire and some teams lose it and we'll flip the script. That's what I'm thinking right now. I'm also thinking every team needs to have a whole second football team in a bubble practice squad to insert into their, into their Sunday games at, at a moment's notice because we don't know who we're going to lose. We might have Jerry Jones head, uh, being the head coach at the Cowboys at some point. We don't know. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll good see. debate. It was good. good. It was I, great talking. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the, the next few the next few weeks. Um, but we'll, we'll see. All right. Good debate. We'll watch the games Monday night. We'll be back for another Sunday night talk next week. Omar Carmona, thanks. All right. Good talk, man. Bye. That is it for the Sunday Night Talk, everyone. Thank you, Omar Carmona, for joining me. Thank you, everybody, who listened as well. Don't you feel better? Don't you feel like you're ready for Monday now? I know I am. Hey, don't forget, on Thursday, catch Running It Back with me and Travis Tate. We run it back on the movie The Wizard. Yeah. Fred Savage. You know that movie. Comes out on Thursday. You're really going to like it. Thank you, everyone, who's listening. And hey, how about that debate from me and Omar on the week's games? Actual discourse. I feel like we did a good job. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time.